Hey folks, Rich here. Uh, we're getting ready today to build a John Payne uh, compost powered water heater. And this is a technique that's been around for a long time, uh, since the 70s and 80s, developed by a French guy named John Payne. And um, he used wood chips and black poly pipe to uh, generate uh, hot water for greenhouses, uh, homes, and all kinds of uses. Wherever you need hot water, you could use one of these systems. Um, but here behind me, I have uh, two truckloads, let's call it 20 yards of uh, wood chips behind me here. And this pile, I don't have a thermometer in it right now, but it's been sitting for about a week. Uh, it's hitting about 140 pounds. And uh, today I'm waiting for the work crew to get here, but we're gonna uh, get it wet. Um, if this thing were to dry out, it would uh, sort of stall the process and we wouldn't be getting the heat that we're looking for. Um, but we're running this kind of black tubing through it's a one inch poly pipe and we'll use that to transfer the water and i've got 600 feet and this piece of uh, scrap here to go through it um so that's about 25 gallons or a little bit more than that that will be in uh, the pile itself um so that's that and then the whole corral will be made out of these straw bales um and we're going to build it here on the uh, west side of the building and what you see there is a perforated pipe with an elbow there and then um that what's that's going to do is bring in fresh air that will pass through this drain tile uh, which will be coiled at the bottom of the pile in a 10 foot uh circle or so you know laid flat on the ground and then we'll surround it at that with our uh, straw bales and <clears throat> that will begin the process then we'll start covering with the wood chips and over here this is where my thermometer is right now is a, uh, a couple of uh, truckloads of uh, cow manure and I got this from a local farmer and it's not gonna cooperate but anyways it's a it's about 180 degrees 170 degrees in there right now um, which is crazy hot and you could certainly pull put some pipes through that and do that um, but the reason we use the wood chips is this is kind of like a, a, a drag racer a super fast burn uh, this will put out a lot of heat in a shorter amount of time. So in six, eight, ten weeks, this thing is going to burn out uh, on itself. If I were just to do manure. But however, with the wood chips, it's a much slower burn. Um, and you'll get much more heat out of this uh, over upwards of 18 months. Um, it's unlikely I'll see that. This is a, a little bit smaller than what is recommended um, for the, the full 18 months. And I'm cool with that. Um, but you know, is this worth it? Is it worth it to get hot water, uh, here in my off grid space? Uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be nice. Um, but really what I need is compost. I've made compost for years and this year I've made, uh, three batches of 18 day hot compost, which you, you turn over a few days and one bay to the next and so on. I did that three times this year and my back doesn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm getting old so um this is really going to generate a lot of compost once this whole process is done once the pile goes cold and uh, we're done making hot water then i'll have a big pile of um you know some decent compost um and the straw bales will be equally broken down and uh, can use throughout the homestead for various garden projects and what well here we are we've got the compost laid into the first course of straw bales and now we've laid out some of the pipe which is going into the building um, this will be the cold return and looping through and we're about to put material on top of this and then layer 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 here we go well Deanne left a little while ago and I've been working away um, as our manure pile gets smaller um, we were mixing the bottom um, bale, first course, um, mixing it pretty heavily with the, the manure. It was probably more like a one-to-one, -one, um, probably should have been a two-to-one, who knows. Um, but if we keep on with that rate, they'll probably, uh, you know, use that up before we reach the top of this pile. So what I'm doing is uh, throwing in a layer of wood chips, and then it'll be pipe, and then be manure, wood chips, pipe, and like that. So um, we'll see how it goes. Like getting ready for the second looping of the uh, 
with the pipe. Um, but I'm building it up first with just a straight layer of uh, compost or wood chips, soon to be compost. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we're seeing about 91 degrees in the first temperature sensor, which was set down near the drain tile. Bonus here, I had discovered just now, going through my stuff, a bucket of urine-soaked biochar, everybody's favorite. Uh, not a, quite a full bucket, but uh, a nice discovery at this point, and I think I'm gonna spread that around this layer and have that as a little boost uh, for this layer. Um, and then later, I've got a few bags of uh, coffee grounds, so we'll include that in the layer. And uh, the cow pile is looking much more manageable and doable now to spread it out. And they also have my chicken coop to clean out back there. So there'll be plenty more nitrogen uh, coming in, uh, just hopefully not too much. Well, we got the skid steer out, but uh, I was too busy to take film of that. So anyways, dad came out, pulled the scoop, and dumped it over that last layer of mixed uh, mixed layer. And now I've got it up here and we're getting into level three now. And something I haven't really talked about out here is the temperature probes. So there's one of them there. Um, I've lost it <laughs> once I had to dig it out and that was a pain in the butt. But I also have a second one just above the drain tile. So I have a low sensor and then a high sensor and I'll be able to track what's going on uh, with the temps. Um, but yeah, here we are. Um, next, I'm gonna coil that out and then we'll top it off with some manure and then go for probably bigger scoops of the uh, wood chips that coming in from here on out. Um, we talked about four layers. You see our coursing, we did not have a level foundation uh, to get started. Uh, I'm not sweating it too much. Um, and then over here, you can see the sacrifice that I'm making with this, and that is to lose some of my window. Um, so be it. I'm cool with that for now. So, so inside here, I'm just using a uh, simple ESP8266, um, the generic version. These are like three to five dollars a piece, the boards. Um, so really uh, inexpensive and awesome. But yeah, I've got the uh, the pipe coming in, and then uh, the wire trails it like that, um, but that to code this, it's just basic Arduino code for the DS18B20. And um, from there, I dial into my network and I'm serving it up to Node Red. Uh, if you don't know Node Red, check it out. Very cool for home automation and monitoring and things like that, uh, but here it is. Um, so you see that top sensor is reading the ambient temperature and the uh, bottom is at 121 up from 115, which I saw this morning. So here I have a weekly uh, view, and uh, we built the pile uh, the day before we started. The second day I installed the sensor. Today's the fourth day, and you just see the sharp rise. So I've seen six degrees and just since I got up three hours ago, four hours ago. So, and this is when I was doing development, and it was here in the room. So anyways, uh, kind of cool way to watch it, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, happens when the water is drawn through the system and what happens there. So stay tuned. Our neighbor Jeff's here to run the skid steer, so he's got a scoop of the manure, and this is gonna make things go a little bit faster. <laughs> I'm just gonna fork it out uh, once he gets it here. He's not gonna dump it, I'm gonna fork it. All right, day four of the build, and uh, hopefully the last. Uh, it should be. Uh, be. Behind me here, I loaded up the, uh, or cleaned out the chicken coop and loaded this up with a layer of chicken litter. So that'll be good. And uh, yep, we're gonna have more of the skid steer today, and that'll be expedite things for sure. And yeah, yeah we'll get it kept off, but. Here she is, all done. A pile of compost. Look at that. Um, yeah, things are going well. Um, so 
just a quick review of things. Um, took about five days to build. Um, the first two courses were largely done by hand and was definitely a lot of work and worked our bodies pretty hard. Um, but definitely did a lot of really good mixing down there. And it turns out uh, in terms of composition that most of the uh, nitrogen wound up in the bottom. Although there's still plenty towards the top um, with biochar and chicken manure and uh, things like that. Um, one thing I didn't show earlier was uh, how this breather works. My neighbor had a piece of scrap uh, perforated pipe and um, so yeah, it breathes in uh, the ambient air and then it's got that two feet of cover uh, on top of that. The first day uh, it got cold, I had not covered this yet and I saw a difference in the bottom of the pile, which is so far been really uh, stable in terms of temperature around uh, 146, 147 down in the bottom of the pile. But I did see a slight drop when the cold air was not being uh, buffered by this cover and I'll put a layer of wood chips on top of this yet too. So a little more buffering. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the slow build and I could have gone through and really hammered and worked hard and uh, got it done uh, quickly. Um, but when the, I would do a layer, I would spend a lot of time with the hose and making sure that it really, really got wet uh, on each of those layers. And um, so I would soak it, let it set for a half hour, soak it a little bit more, rake it a little bit and keep working it. And um, so I was really diligent about making sure there was uh, plenty of moisture in this thing from the, the top to the bottom. So that's part of why it took so long. Also, we had planned to host a workshop and have all kinds of people show up and help out. And um, that did not happen. So. I wound up doing a lot of the work myself. I had the help of uh, Deanne and Nell and Amanda there for a day, which is awesome and great. And um, would have been nice to have seen uh, more of that. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about permaculture and um, how some of the principles are applying here. And one of course is capture and store energy. Um, so we're definitely doing that here, capturing the energy of the biological activity. So that's kind of fun and then uh, stacking functions. I mentioned earlier that I wouldn't necessarily do this just to, to get hot water. I have other ways to make hot water um, that include stacking functions, but uh, here my need is really compost. So um, really having a big blast of compost uh, in a year or a year and a half from now is a big bonus. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, but the hot water is definitely an added bonus. In terms of how much it cost, uh, in 2024 dollars, um, it was about 550 bucks for the uh, pipe, the black pipe, and the straw bales. And uh, the guy was charging me five bucks a load for the uh, the cow manure and stuff. Um, but yeah, about 550 bucks, and that does the basic plumbing on the inside and and the pile and what you see out here. Uh, the straw bales, I got 27 of them for $3 a piece from an Amish guy, uh, and I wound up buying them out. Uh, but in the end, it would turned out to be about 50 uh, straw bales. And if I were to make the full size of this, it would have been more like 100 uh, straw bales with the 40 yard uh, size pile. So uh, that can add some expense for sure. But if you get them at three bucks a, a bale is nice. And then so the rest of them I had to get at $5 a bale. So that was quite an increase and in, in a big part of the cost. I could have used a few more straw bales. You'll see an opening here, and then I have one on the other side. Um, but I broke open a bale and kind of covered the top as best I could. And then uh, over here in my compost bins, I have a bunch of leaves. And what I plan to do is either put those bags up as bags, or maybe run those leaves through a, uh, a lawnmower once or twice and make some shreds and then give it another layer of uh, mulch up there. So. We'll see how that goes. All right, so let's give this a try. I've got uh, just a quick review here. I've got the bucket, which now is just has a little bit of water in the bottom, as high as this valve will allow for. And then uh, we've got the hot water coming in from the pile here. The cold water from the bucket dropping down through this valve um, back into the pile. So I can turn the bucket off now by doing this. And I'm going to open up this valve, which is going to allow the incoming water. 
Um, but first, I'm going to turn on the pump. So I got the, the five-gallon bucket full of rainwater. Turn that on. We're pushing on this here. I'm going to open it up. I know we got water coming through. Oh, yeah. Take out two or three gallons and see what we get. Call that good. Turn this off. Open that up. And I had hoped that that would be like a prime, that that would make enough, uh, you know, get the thermal siphon going. And I did see that uh, in the first few days. Like I said, it was thermal siphling sort of trickling afterwards. Uh, but let's see what kind of temperatures we got. <clears throat> so, oops, 120. So I'm calling 120 pretty dang good. Um, so now it just becomes a matter of handling it. Um, but let's have a look over here at the, uh, the computer a little bit. And just did that draw. Um, but up until now, you could see that there was a very tight parallel between the top and the bottom and the temperatures they were holding. Uh, 154.6 right now, um, but 155.3. So uh, the window, uh, the range the, between the low and the high each day is uh, quite tight. And then uh, as well as from the top and the bottom. But here's the weekend review. Um, here's the first day that we buried the bottom sensor and it gradually rose over time. And then uh, we buried it some more. And then here's where we buried the, uh, the top sensor. And you could see the quick rise to the top. And for a while there, it was at 160, over like 150 something on the bottom. And then it uh, holds very tight, uh, the levels. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, also, I mentioned that when the cold air was coming into the bottom through that breather, um, that wasn't going through the insulation. I saw a drop down here and we're still seeing a drop. Uh, but anyways, I have one hour and let's give this a refresh. And yeah, that's what we'd expect. So we see uh, it drew out some of that uh, heat out of the pile. But you'll notice that the low uh, one down here uh, is pretty much unchanged. And that's where the cold water went in. So very interesting. Um, so I took out about two and a half gallons and I'll do my dishes and um, call this a success. So thanks for following along folks. I hope you got something out of it and I'd uh, love to hear your feedback, how I might do it differently, better, quicker, smarter. Uh, anyways, hot water for all. <laughs>